my lipstick's a little bit, little bit uh too red. So I blotted a little bit. That reminds me of a, a little thing my grandmother had on the back of her toilet in the bathroom. And it was somebody had taken off taken um a roll of toilet paper and sawed it half in two where it still and took the cardboard out and pulled up a little sheet from it and crocheted a little doily thing around it and it said take a sheet at a time uh, to blot your lips it had a little poem a sheet at a time but don't use on your behind <laughs> a sheet at a time for blotting your lips so every time I blot my lips. I think about that little thing on the back of Granny's toilet. Anyway, that that's just weird that I'd think of that. So let's get some music going while we get some people in here. Let's get the chat up and running. And let's see what we're going to play. Let's do one more day. I love this song. I love it. Come on in. I got my questions. Almost. It's four I can full hear pages. The sound and the rain begins to fall. I can feel my courage it's tremble after I have come so far today my heart is sinking get your calendars we're gonna run out before January world is caving in. But there's light on the horizon And the darkness will give in To one more day of hope One more day of faith Tomorrow will be brighter If I get through today Better days are coming further down the road. So for now, I'll just keep clinging to one more day of hope. One more day. And I know that I'll get through this My dreams are in my grasp When I find the power within me I know this storm will pass <clears throat> It will only make me stronger, stronger when this victory I've won, I can last a little longer. If I keep holding on to one more day of hope, one more day of faith, tomorrow will be brighter. If I get through today, better days are coming further down the road. So for now, I'll just keep clinging to one more day of hope. One more day. So for now, I'll 
just keep me clinging to one more day of hope. One more day. Get on in here, everybody. Yeah, it's it's time. It's Thursday. It's question and answer day. I love this day. A lot of y'all don't like it, but we're gonna we got four pages of questions, and we're gonna get right to it. We're in uh, day twenty eight of our of our chaos to clean in thirty one easy baby baby steps. If you don't if you don't take care of you, who will? Eat healthy food and drink your water. We give so much of ourselves away every day. It is not selfish to take a few minutes to fill your heart with joy. So I, uh, I noticed that uh, Patty said, Peter from Old Man King Homestead is in here. He's so sweet. It, it, you know, he, he gave me a shout out on his page. On his on his show, so on his ch on his channel, Peter. I hope you're feeling better today, and this day is for you because you got to eat right, you got to drink plenty of water, and you got to take breaks. And that's all about taking care of you. There's a weird noise going on outside, and I don't know what that is. It's the Roomba. I think it's about died. Let me turn it off. It's making a weird noise. He Robert killed it. Robert killed it. That's good. Anyway, folks, let's let's get into our our, our devotional this morning, October 27th. God doesn't push, he empowers. Isn't that beautiful? God doesn't push, he empowers. This is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. You can do everything through him who gives you strength. So ask the Lord for strength. He'll show up and he'll show out. Now we're in, um, we're starting in chapter 8 of Matthew. Let me, let's read this little section. Jesus heals a leper. After he came down from teaching on the hillside, massive crowds began following him. Suddenly, a leper walked up to Jesus and threw himself down before him in worship and said, Lord, you have the power to heal me if you really want to. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the leopard and said, Of course, I want to heal you. Be healed. And instantly, all signs of the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, don't, don't speak to anyone, but go at once and find a priest and show him what has happened to you and make sure to take the offering Moses commanded so that you can certify your healing. Wow. Wow. You know, when people had leprosy, they had to holler out that they were coming through the streets. Unclean, unclean, unclean. And the priest could certify that he was clean and didn't have to do that anymore. Wow. So, folks, God is so good. We just have to, we have to reach out to him, you know. The Bible teaches us if you you have not because you ask not. So stay in the word. Stay in prayer. You know, pray continuously. I'm always lifting up a prayer to 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 the Lord all all day long. I'm thanking him for things. I go to bed thanking him for things. I I pray in my sleep. So folks, give it to God. Give it to God. Okay, here is the holiday mission for today. It's Thursday. It's your day to go and get things done. 
And if you're headed to the grocery store, you can pick up a few items for the holidays that you still need. Baking supplies are so expensive. And, and they are all when they're all bought at one time, just start adding flour, nuts. I took inventory yesterday. We like we cook with a lot of pecans. Robert calls them pecans. I call them pecans. <laughs> and uh how do y'all say it? And he uh having the right things in the pantry, he can make Robert is a good cookie baker. He is a really good cookie baker. And he just does some some amazing cookies. Even Justin loves his little old lady cookies. They're just, they are so, so good. So put some, some things on the grocery list this week to get them in here. I ordered um, some chocolate chips. We were talking about making Toll House cookies yesterday. I like to make Toll House cookies. In fact, I make a Toll House dough and I add pecans to it and turn it into pecan sandies. If you haven't read my book, The Chaos Cure, let me find it right here. The Chaos Cure, it has some has some recipes in it of how you make one, and I've got it on, on our YouTube channel too, how you make one basic dough and divide it into three parts. And you can turn it into chocolate chip cookies. You can turn it into pecan sandies. You can put some M&Ms in it. You can do lots of things with it. With just making one basic dough. I think the Roomba has bit the dust. <laughs> anyway, so get some things on your grocery list that you're going to need for, you know, baking your favorite, favorite items. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we praise you, Lord, for the common sense that you've given us. Isn't it wonderful that we don't have to know everything to know how to do something like cooking with without having to have uh, a cookbook to show us how to do it. You know, we just learn how to do things. We can watch a video and it doesn't have to be precise. We love that, Lord. Thank you so much. That common sense helps us more than you could ever know. You just, you give us the ability to do what needs to be done and make it happen. And we do it through you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Keep my fly baby safe all over the world. Keep my favorite podcasters or YouTube influencer safe. We're ready, Lord. We're ready for whatever comes our way because you helped us prepare like Joseph for seven years of, of plenty and seven years of famine. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to be prepared. All these things we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Okay, folks, let's get to our questions. First question, and it's four pages, y'all, and it didn't print on the back. I'm so happy. I had, had a problem with my printer last Saturday, and it was it messed up my settings again. So we got, we got this going right. Does a feather duster need to be cleaned in a certain way? How often do I need to wash it? with just soap and water. Here's the thing about feather dusters. When you first get your feather duster, it may smell like mothballs. They're packed in mothballs. And you can blow dry it with a hairdryer, or you can steam it over a tea kettle. That's the way they do it. I mean, the people that make our feather dusters have been making them for 200 years in their family and it's it's just it just blows me away that this is their and they harvest these ostrich feathers they corner the market on these ostrich feathers and they're it's just but the thing about it when you're feather when you dust your home 
you can take the feather duster outside and shake it. And I've shown you plenty of videos about shaking the duster outside and blessing the world with the dust that's supposed to be outside. But occasionally you may feather dust something that's got some yucky stuff in it and you might get it dirty. Now do not feather dust. We've gotten many a testimonial about people feather dusting their shredder. Feather dusters and shredders do not mix. So don't do that. But when you need to clean your feather duster, now we have, let me see if I can't reach it and I'm not going to get off my stool. Um, feathers have, well, I am going to get off my stool. Hold on a second. This is our feather duster. And if you have an old feather duster <laughs> that is, uh, and you get yourself a new one, because our new one has purple, a little, little, few little purple feathers in it. And this is the feather that's under the wing of the ostrich. It's called a floss feather. And we, 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 it's, it matches my hair because there's dark hair and gray hair and, uh, it, it, but if you get it dirty, if it gets dirty and it needs to be washed, use a bucket, five gallon bucket, fill it up with warm water, put a drop of Dawn dishwashing liquid or baby shampoo, whatever you've got and put it in the bucket. And swish it around, swish it, swish it around, and then rinse it. You don't want to do it in your kitchen sink because these feathers are dyed, and that dye might come out. But if you do it in a bucket, you can just pour it outside and water a plant with it, and then um, then you can just they hang them up and let them dry like this. Or you can blow dry them like you would your hair. And they get all poofy. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it just beautiful? But some people have, a friend of mine in Nashville, her daughter likes to raise chickens when she was little. She's gotten married and has her own home now. But she would take the old feather duster and she would hang it upside down in the brooder so that the little chicks would... When, when she would incubate eggs, the little chicks would get under there like it's, it's mama. And they really liked, that's another use for a feather duster. But how often you should do it? Once a year, if that. But feather dusters do not like, folks, they do not like dark closets. So you have to keep your feather duster out in the open. And if you have a cat, you might have to... <laughs> put it on top of the refrigerator or something, but feather dusters do not like dark because dust mites thrive in the dark and you don't want to, dust mites to eat up your feather duster. I've got every feather duster we've ever sold in our house. I have an umbrella stand in the living room and that umbrella stand is full of feather dusters. I have three right over there that decorate this room. They're feather dusters we have sold in the past. And it is, it's just, they're such a useful tool. They may, I can dust my whole house in two minutes. Two minutes, y'all. Two minutes. And I've done it for somebody. Okay, next, next question. I have four small sample hand lotions that smell like lilac. The only problem is it makes me sneeze my head off. Can I use the hand lotion to swish and swipe my toilet? If they make you sneeze, you need to get rid of it. That means you're allergic to it. Do not use it in your toilet. Don't do that. Now, I have used some, uh, I have put some essential oil sometime in, in my swish and swipe container, but if I'm, if I'm allergic to it and I start sneezing my head out, why would you want to sit on the toilet and sneeze? If you're sneezing from it, you need to get it out of your house. That's all about loving you or give it away to somebody. But do not, do not make yourself hold on to this stuff 
It's all about loving yourself. I would love to listen to relaxing music for videos, inspirational videos like you do. I believe you use your cell phone, but how do you protect your phone from hackers and viruses or anything else that could happen to a computer? Well, I don't really understand your question. Right now, I have downloaded an update for my iPhone because there is an important update that came out today. When my husband tells me there is an update, I pretty much do it because something's happened. And they've they've done I usually ask Michael, but this time I went ahead and downloaded it and I will uh, install it in my phone after the show's over, but I'm not going to do it while I'm doing the show. I'm not afraid to listen to beautiful music on YouTube. I have I have an iPod, y'all all know that. It has uh, thousands and thousands of songs on it that I've purchased over the, the last um, 15 years that I've owned this thing. It's, it's got our music. It's got lots of playlists of gospel music and Christmas music. In fact, I called Justin the other day and they're in the, they're in the packing room playing Christmas music like crazy. I don't use, I use my cell phone to do a short if I have to do a short, if I do a short, but I use my computer to send, to do my messages. But some people just use a phone and that's great. I believe you use your cell phone, but how do you protect your phone from hackers and viruses? Well, first off, I never click on anything that comes to me in an email. That's a rule I have had for 22 years. I never click on anything. If it's something I want to check out, I go to the home website of the, 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 the link they're trying to make you believe is from your bank or from whatever. I go straight to the source because it'll tell you. So I'm real particular about what I click on. In fact, I don't click on anything. I go straight to the source. So don't be afraid to listen to music videos on on YouTube. Last night, we listened to um, the Carnival of Animals. I, I don't know who, who did that. I wish Robert was sitting right here with me to tell me. But it's some beautiful music. Beautiful music, and we found an orchestra playing it, and we watched the orchestra, and we listened to the music over our our speakers, and it was wonderful, but we're doing it from a YouTube app on Roku. So there's lots of things you can do. So don't be fearful. That's the main thing. A lot of times, you won't even throw away paper because you're afraid. Rebuke the demon of fear in the name of Jesus and do it now because fear has no place in our lives. We cannot be afraid. We cannot be afraid. So as Peter would say, thank you for subscribing. (laughs) And please um, click the notification bell. Share us any way you can. This morning I woke up with a a beautiful song in my heart. I didn't I didn't even know how to spell it. So I I've, I've decided that not being able to spell hallelujah is a demon and I'm going to rebuke that demon and I'm going to learn to spell hallelujah because I'm going to praise God and I, the song I shared this morning was just amazing. And it's in the community section. And how it came about was because a little boy named Jackson, I have a nephew named Jackson. And uh, it's my brother's 
son is named Jackson. And I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Patty and I, neither one can, can spell. Patty's put the song in here. Now, Dina can spell. Justin can spell. But Patty and I have, have issues with it. So I'm, I'm declaring it to be gone. In the name of Jesus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spell. So don't let fear keep you from listening to beautiful music, from letting it echo through your home. Let, let it out of YouTube and, and share it with the world. Because if it touches you, it's going to touch somebody else. I raise a hallelujah. Do you think some prize chicken made in an Instant Pot with cranberry juice would taste good? No. <laughs> oh my. I just don't know about surprise chicken made with cranberry juice. I don't have a clue. Now, I've known about lime, lime and uh, garlic lime chicken. Leanne's made it for us many times. It, it just, but I've never, I've never seen a recipe with cranberry juice and chicken. Never have. So I don't know about that. You might make a punch out of the cranberry juice and put something else on the chicken. Last night I was looking at some cute little little short videos. I get I can watch those. My eyes start burning. I've, I've watched them and don't blink. But they made a keto pasta out of chicken. They pureed in the in their. Um, food processor, added some eggs to it, and then they dropped it in a little bit of boiling water in a skillet until it congealed, and then they stir-fried it in some olive oil and then put a Alfredo sauce over it. It was a keto pasta. No, it was chicken nuggets. Anyway, I don't know about the cranberry juice, but you can search chicken and cranberry juice on YouTube, and I bet you'd find a recipe. My brain is stuck trying to think of what I can serve two people for Thanksgiving. Any ideas besides just turkey? It's just me and my husband. Okay. Been there, done that. Yep, been there, done that. And did it with You know, when you think about buying a turkey for two people, Robert and I don't even like turkey. Buying a turkey for two people, even a 12-pound turkey is going to be $100. So one year, it wasn't my second husband. I don't I don't even call his name because he, he, he just doesn't exist in my life. Robert and I will soon be married 26 years. And... and one Thanksgiving or Christmas, I can't remember what it was, but we had taken our pocket change and put it in a jar. And we didn't have a whole lot of money. It's when we first moved up to North Carolina. And so I took inventory of what we had in the house and I decided I was going to make a traditional Thanksgiving dinner, but I wasn't going to buy a turkey. So I bought some chicken thighs. Robert calls them chicken figs. But I bought some chicken thighs. I bought, um, I had cornmeal, I had flour, so I could make biscuits, I could make rolls, I could, I could do a lot of, a lot of things with the, that stuff. I could make co cornbread for my southern cornbread stuffing, not stuffing, it's dressing in the south. I got a couple of uh, sweet potatoes. I got some, I had some white potatoes to make mashed potatoes. And I put together a whole dinner and a pumpkin pie to boot with $23.82. I need to find that essay. But you can make a dinner for two people. You do it every night. 
You do it every night. Keep it simple. Justin's thinking about making, buying a filet, a beef filet, and cooking steaks for his guests this year so that, that his wife doesn't have to stay in the kitchen so much. But you cook the chicken and you can, I've got a YouTube video on how to smother fry chicken and it, it turned out pretty good. Turned out pretty good. So you can do a, just a pared down mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes. One year I did sweet potatoes with, with just um, onions and salt roasted in the oven. And Robert loved them. Did carrots that way too one year. What can I do about this stuffy odor in my parlor? I smell it when I walk into the door, into the house. It's where we watch TV and my husband exercises. I blame him and the dog. Well, first off, if there's a dog bed in there, you may need to wash the cover of the dog bed. And the best way to get rid of a smell is to open your door. And now there's going to be some warm days still. You can open the door, turn the heat off and, and let fresh air come in the house. Now, if he's sweating profusely, that's going to be a locker room smell. So you may need to wipe down surfaces with some Lysol. And Justin's got a video of his videos on how to sterilize your kitchen back when, when the you-know-what was going on. And we were all trying to be as safe as we could. Uh, but if you have vents in that room, they're, they could have the smell stuck to dust bunnies in, in that in a vent. So you could take your multi-wand right here and go down inside, take the cover off the vent and go down inside and, and drag out anything that is musty smelling. Now, it, you could have a mouse dead in there, too. And it eventually, eventually it will go away. But any, any fabric surfaces, you can take one of your multi microfiber rags and dip it in warm, soapy water, squeeze it out good, and you can wipe the surfaces of furniture too and, and, and clean it. Clean, clean your upholstery furniture because that's where the smell is. If you've got pillows on your couch or or in chairs, take those outside and let the sun just refresh them. So don't, don't blame your husband. Just get after one thing at a time until you, you know, I've got a mystery smell challenge uh, video that I did once upon a time. I may have to share that. <laughs> and it was a, a yucky potato. <clears throat> I, I have been in a huge depression lately. My house is a pigsty. How can I start getting myself out of this? This is what Fly Lady's all about. Go shine your kitchen sink. Get dressed to lace up shoes. Pick out your clothes for tomorrow so you don't drag around. But the first thing you got to do, you recognize you have this heaviness on you. Rebuke the demon of heaviness. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And if you need something to read, my sister has a book. Dr. Patty has a book on out of the darkness coming through depression. She and Pastor Ken wrote this book. And there's my sweet sister right there on the back. She's 14 months younger than I am, but she's wise. And she spent 10 years getting her PhD in Christian counseling. So she knows what she's talking about. But re when in doubt, start rebuking. When, start rebuking. 
rebuke that that heaviness. Pastor Derek Prince had had depression on his life. He had it. There's if you look up Derek Prince and depression, he's got a sermon on it. Go shine your sink. Yesterday, before I went to bed, I saw a video where Elon Musk walked into Twitter headquarters with a sink in his hands. And I'm I'm thinking, what's he doing with a sink? Is this going to be an analogy of something? I I didn't get the meme at all. He actually walked into Twitter headquarters with a sink. It was a bathroom sink. But you know, sinks is a good place to start. Shine your kitchen sink. And I got instructions on how to do it. I got a video on how to do it. I was wondering about the holiday cruising missions we're currently doing. Are these leading up to Thanksgiving? And then we'll do it again for Christmas? No. I got to sneeze. Look up. Sometimes you can stop a sneeze. I learned how to stop a yawn the other day. Uh, Who was it? Jason from Cog Hill Farm says he can stop a yawn. And I said, if Jason can do it, I can do it. So I stopped a yawn. Where did that go? I moved it over before I got through with it. Holiday cruising. You haven't read the essay I wrote on what holiday cruising is all about. Our goal, as any of you know, who have to get ready to go on vacation and you work a full-time job, you have to get everything at work done because nobody's going to come in and do your work for you. You're going to take off and that work's still going to need to be done. So you have to get things done ahead of time. That's what cruising is all about. We are pretend cruising cruising just to kind of wrap our heads around it you know i sent out something from dutch sheets this morning about dreaming wrap your head around it dream big and if you haven't heard ryan sheep's song dream big find it and listen to it on youtube dream big is an amazing song but dutch had a a devotional about it today i think my roomba has bitten the dust It's been such a helpful tool. Robert's working on it. I love having a husband that can fix anything. He can fix anything. I told him this morning, I said, honey, and I know this is a duck. I said, honey, if we got to go through an apocalypse, you're the person I want to do it with. Because we've read every book, we've read, we've had series we've watched about apocalyptic things, and you know, so- society breaks down. There's my hair sticking out. I don't know why that's sticking out. I got to take my hair down. Okay, that's better. Now it's all fly away. So we're into our second week of missions. And we have a basic weekly plan to those missions. But when when the when it ends the day after Thanksgiving, it ends on Black Friday, we don't really start over. The goal is to have everything done so that you're ready for Christmas, so that you can pr- play during December. And we got an extra week because Thanksgiving is on the 24th. So the 25th is on a Friday. And then we have that whole next week to the 30th. Uh, it's like a grace week to get ready to go on the cru- on our fake cruise. Now, this fake cruise is going to leave out on December 1st, and it's not going to get back till the 21st. So you have to have everything done. Everything done. No, it's not our cat. Our cat's scared of everything. Our, we really do have a scaredy cat. Um, 
So when December rolls around, those of you who missed the boat, who missed the boat, literally missed the boat doing our holiday missions because you said, oh, I'm, I'll just, I'll do that later. Your procrastination, your perfectionist. I don't have time to do a five minute mission right now. You know, anybody's got five minutes. We will do something called a super cruising mission. And it, we do um, three weeks, I think it is. It's 15 missions that are speeded up, speeded up. And you'll be through by the, by the 15th. But I want you to play during December. I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy yourself, make memories with your family. Have fun decorating and baking and having cookie parties. And it's such a fun way to get together with people. When your house is in order and you keep it that way, you can enjoy the season instead of running around like a Christmas banshee screaming at the top of your lungs for everybody to do things right. I'm a newbie and I normally get the gift wrap after shop and I normally get the gifts wrapped after shopping and wrap everything in one full day. How can I continue that or is it easier to wrap as you bring them in? wrap as you bring them in. People are less likely to to find your your gifts if you wrap them as you bring them in and send the children to the playroom right now. Send the children to the playroom. I'm going to count to I'm going to count to 10. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. Okay, kids are out of the room. Wrap the presents, put a sticker on it that says who it's from. Our color code, everybody gets it like your calendar codes. Everybody gets a count, gets a color and write it in your control journal what red six is, who it's for, and hide it in your luggage that you take on vacation. Yep. Never look there. But you could also put their name on it if you wanted to, it's, especially if it's not somebody that goes on your calendar all the time. <clears throat> but wrap as you bring things, as things come in the house, coming in from Amazon, coming in from eBay, coming in from other places. When they come in, get them wrapped. Have your gift wrapping station set up where all you got to do is it's two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, and you can get a present. Now, you might not get a bow on it. I may have to do a video on how you make a bow. I am an expert bow maker. It's an expert bow maker here. And these bows, I only use wired ribbon, y'all. Only use wired ribbon. And... I put the bow around the box, crisscross it on the back, come back to the top, and then tie. I love knots, y'all, just so you know. I tie a half hitch on top of on top of the package. But when I measure the bow, I do this. From the end of your nose to the tip of your finger is, is one yard. And I measure five of those, five yards. And I split it in half and wrap it around the box. And then I tie bows like, like you teach your children to tie their shoes with bunny ears. I take bunny ears and tie. Take the ends, take bunny ears and tie. That's how I make my bows. And you can smash them down and then all you got to do is fluff them up. Now you can't travel with wrap packages. They won't let you do that. But if you're driving, you can. Okay. 
That one's done. We've got one more page, y'all. One more page. Do you have a control journal for preparing for a cruise on a boat? If not, which control journal would be <clears throat> best for this? Well, since you're preparing for a cruise, the holiday control journal is going to be a good one for that. But we also have a packing control journal, packing for vacation. And what I would recommend doing is when you go on a cruise, you got to have some dress up clothes and, and just make a note card of the things that you've got, you've got to carry. I, when, as a family, we went on vacation, I had a note card for each person because we, we only went on vacation in the summertime. But I also had a note card of things to do in the house when we left, things to do in the house when we got home, and that was on the dining room table ready to go when we walked in the door. Uh, things in a group suitcase. We had a toiletry suitcase that carried all our all our um, hygiene stuff and our sunscreen and different things like that. It's all in one, it's a big red bag. And it was, I called it a red bag card. And then I had a card for the kitchen because we stayed in a, a condo. And that condo had a wonderful kitchen. And I would take my, my pot that I used to make a low country boil I would fill it full of almost ripe tomatoes and we would take those to Florida and we would have fresh red ripe tomatoes. All We were there for two weeks, fresh red ripe tomatoes. And it, it was amazing. We took a lot of food with us that didn't have to be refrigerated and it worked well. Now, Justin still does this when he travels with his family. He's going to... Um, a a a B and B, not a B and B, but a VRBO in Knoxville this weekend. He's they're taking Emily's mom to a UT football game, which is going to be so much fun. But they're going to be staying in a little house, and they're going to cook. And Bre Justin loves to cook breakfast, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. They get to see Ethan. So there's a packing control journal, but there's a method to the madness. There's a method to the madness. You put a card for each person, and that's what that is all about. And chairs and anything else, if you're driving, that you can take with you. Strollers, pack and plays. I have fly lady calendars from the last several years that I have kept. Me too. I love my calendars. I'm not sure if this is a good idea or if I should toss them. For some reason, I think I might need some of the information in them. Any suggestions? They take up, my calendars take up this much space. You could put them in a filing cabinet. I mine stay beside a little um, drawer thing that I have underneath my, my, I keep my calendar in my bathroom. So that's where I take it down. And I put that calendar right beside this little drawer thing. So I have about this much space that my calendars take up. I do not think it's bad to keep your calendars. They, we, we have seen in Congress that calendars, uh, Justice uh, Kavanaugh kept his calendars from his, his whole life. He kept his calendars. It's, it's a history. It's a history. And that calendar can stand up in court too, because we've had fly babies that have utilized their calendars when uh, an ex-husband trying to get custody of the kids said she's not taking her to the doctor. It's written right on the calendar that they use every day. Walk in the door, social services come in the door and see a menu plan on your calendar and stuff in the crock pot that you said you were going to cook that day. So calendars hold up in court. 
They really do. And my husband was a judge for 20 years. Okay. Yes, you need your calendars. But if you don't want to keep them, that's fine too. I have an electric stove. Should we be cleaning it daily after the dinner mass? Or can it just be done in the kitchen zone? No, don't wait. Clean your kitchen as you go. Now, if something boils over, you need to clean that stove. You don't need to wait for it to get hard and messed, uh, dried up, and make it harder. on. When you postpone things like that, you make things harder on you. And I, I care about you. I don't care about the stove. But I, I have a glass top stove. And my glass top stove is 22 years old. And it's hard to clean sometimes. But you know what I keep in my utensil drawer right beside the stove a little box of single edge razor blades and those single edge, edge edge razor blades can scrape some stuff off of that glass surface and not not damage it i love it but clean as you go because if you don't you're going to make it harder and it's going to take longer to clean up and you don't want a messy stove greeting people coming in your house. How do I plan a small party? I am letting my perfectionism get in the way. Well, first off, rebuke the perfectionism. It's a tool of the evil one to keep you from having that party. Do you hear me? Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to think of earlier today. Do you hear me? Don't allow your perfectionism to get in the way. A small party? What do you need? Are you going to have served dinner? Or are you just going to have hors d'oeuvres? What is it going to be? We like to have hors d'oeuvre parties. What are your favorite hors d'oeuvres? Some of my favorite are kielbasa sausages with some brown sugar stuck in the oven. Or little cocktail sausages wrapped in bacon stuck in a crock pot with some brown sugar over the top. And let them cook. Now you got to put got to put toothpicks in them but you know what are your favorite orders another thing i like to do that's cheap is to take an idaho potato my neighbor brought me some yesterday jimmy brought us a bag of idaho potatoes that they grew and you wash them really well and then you slice them in half inch pieces brush them with butter or put some butter in the pan and roll them over put them in the oven and cook them on 350 until they get brown on one side and flip them over and do the other side. And then you can take some cheese and melt on top of them. Just You can pre-cook them and melt some cheese and a dollop of sour cream and some green onions. You've got an, or some bacon. You've got a great little potato round. It's fun. <coughs> Chicken wings, you can do a bunch of chicken wings in the oven. Just come up with things you want to do that are easy to do. Or maybe you have a pizza party like Justin does. Justin shows you how to make pizza for a lot of people. They He pre-cooks the pizza crust and then he hands them out like serving, you know, dealing cards and everybody makes their own pizza around the bar in the kitchen, the island, and they have a good time. And then he's got the oven going. He's got the grill going. He's got pizzas everywhere. Because then all they have to do is just melt the cheese. Don't let your perfectionism ruin having fun with your family. One time for Christmas, we had a fondue party. A little oil, a little cheese, a little chicken broth. Had three different fondues going. And we had a ball. Kids still remember that. Grandchildren still remember the fondue party. It's fun. In your opinion, should I follow this program to be in your opinion, how should I follow this program to be consistent? 
I am signed up for the emails, but haven't been checking them daily as I forget. Well, set up an alarm on your phone. If you know you're going to forget, here we go. On everybody's phone, <clears throat> on everybody's phone, there's a little clock. There's a little clock. And you touch that clock face and you what you do you set yourself an alarm to check your emails. Do it at noon. Do it while you're eating lunch. Check those emails. Because most of them go out in the morning. The musing, the ask fly lady question, the, the video will go out about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. <coughs> Don't get hung up. You do need to be consistent, but you've got to make a commitment. I know you're not the committing kind, but we're establishing habits. That's what we're doing. We're establishing simple habits, stringing them into routines. And then as Liz says, we take those routines and make those a habit. I thought, it's just beautiful. Just beautiful. Habits into routines and routines into habits. Doesn't get any better than that. So, folks, that's all our questions. Did I answer some for you? It's noon already. Can you believe it? Time flies. I just can't believe how much. <clears throat> how much we get done. How many. This is almost. I squanched some questions together so it wouldn't be five pages. We did four pages. Full. Of questions. So y'all get started. If you're not doing the holiday missions, jump in right now. They take you no time at all. No time at all. So get your calendars ordered. We're going to run out before January. We've done the calculations. We know how many we sell every every month, every every season, and we place our orders. And just get your calendars ordered. Carpet sweepers, they're running low. And Monday is the last day to get a carpet sweeper by itself. So get your carpet sweepers ordered. Joanne's asking about yawning. Well, every time I start praying, I start yawning. And I've been rebuking that, <clears throat> that yawning reflex because something doesn't want me to pray. And I'm going to pray. So I just sort of take a deep breath and I clench it and I stop the yawn. I stop the yawn. Jason taught me how to do it. So y'all have some fun. Have some fun doing these missions so that you can really enjoy the holidays at Christmas. But do it now. Don't wait. Do not wait. I love you all. Be good, kind, and sweet. Good to yourself by eating properly, taking your supplements, drinking your water. That's going to help you more than anything. Be kind to others by not being a screaming Christmas banshee. There's nothing worse than that. I lived with I grew up with it. And I never wanted to be that kind of person. And let the joy and the sweetness that fills your heart overflow and show the world who you are. A child of the Most High God. I love you all. It's Aaron Day. Get some stuff done. Get some detailed cleaning done in your living room, and you're going to be glad you did. See you later. Catch you after a while.